Here we are, welcome to the Hearn Generating Station in Toronto, Canada. On Ontario? Toronto, Ontario? In Toronto. Welcome to the Hearn in Toronto. It is cold here. <laughs> My brain is freezing. So the purpose of this commercial is to show off just how strong the Elantra is. The concept is to stack seven vehicles on top of that superstructure, which is the steel frame of the car itself. There was a lot of logistics to coordinate, but fortunately there was this amazing location called the Hearn Building. It was closed down in the 1980s, and so now what we're dealing with is a really old, dilapidated warehouse. This thing is gigantic. It's 650 cubic meters of space. They say that's 12 pantheons big, which I'm not even sure what that means, but it is, it is really huge. Day one was just us showing up to Toronto, which is a lovely city that we didn't even see. Oh. Every single day we drive early to this wet cave of a building. There's been snow on the roof. The roof, of course, isn't sealed, so we have drips coming down. Did Alina not say they were having a hydro vac or something come on one of the They've days? been going. I mean, I don't know if you saw the car crews now, they're just splashing up huge waves and there's shit everywhere. I think they finally just quit their jobs. <laughs> All the players that were involved in this, there was, there was Hyundai, of course, who had the concept. They contacted Cubic, which is a fabrication company up there. A year ago, we did one car on top of a superstructure frame. This year, they came back to us and said, hey, one car worked, you think we can do seven? They had to even test it first to see if it was possible. So they never actually stacked all the way until the shoot day. So tomorrow, we actually build the stack, and it begins with a platform, then the superstructure steel frame, and after that, we have these fabricated steel hats that are contoured to the roof. So you can add a car, a hat, a car, a hat. When the car was barely being put on the next car, they would stop at that moment, and they would just like do the leveling. slightest leveling movements. It took all day till about 7 p.m. They finally had all, everything stacked. That's when everybody showed up from production and was right. like, oh, cool. Drone going up. So when Philip crashed the drone into the car. <laughs> when the car the crashed same. into the drone. That's <laughs> the driver of the car, unbeknownst to the drone pilot, me, decides to make a hard left turn. Oh, shit. So what, what are we looking at? Probably not flying again, ever, possibly. Hit it hard enough to leave a dent in the car. So unfortunately we have a little bit of a ding right here on the top, first shot. I did not expect him to turn. Yeah, no, that was unexpected for sure. The shot's probably insane. <laughs> so within two hours after decapitating the camera from the <laughs> drone, we were flying again later that day. Luckily, tracked down another Spire 2. Now it's here, we'll see. Drone number two. <laughs> yeah. I love it. He had a crazy amount of control on that drone yeah. in there. You can see the responsiveness. Yeah. And I remember at one point, you just grazing the car, getting super <laughs> close. Yeah, how close were you to that car? Physically? Yeah. Less than a foot, I'd say. Less than a foot? God. That was over the stack, though. That was yeah, no, it wasn't a moving car. <laughs> what about the uh, little follow car? It was driven by this amazing, <laughs> That's right. crazy grip, Mario. Yeah, Mario. Yeah. Mario's <laughs> cart. Yeah. <laughs> I just want you to gun it. Sure, well, yeah. Uh, it didn't look like the car was moving that fast, but when you're sitting on that thing like inches off the ground and you're just going through puddles and you can't see anything, it felt plenty fast. Welcome to the main event. This stack is four months in the making and it all comes down to a two hour window. Excitement is in the air, as well as some smoke. They kept saying, just a tickle, cause like there's like a little <laughs> trigger on the uh, smoke machine. Kickler, get a kickler of smoke, a heavy tickle. We finally just finished building the 50 foot techno crane, which you can see behind me. The techno crane can extend and retract. So it kind of allows you to do these compound moves where you can actually move the camera up and down along with spinning it around an axis. So by doing that, we're gonna be able to put the camera all the way on the top and then kind of boom down, keeping the camera really close to all the cars on the stack. The scene is almost comical. We actually have a competing lamp on a crane next to a 50-foot techno crane over the 45-foot stack of vehicles. So the cars that they're removing right there, one of the challenges, of course, with lighting a vehicle is to make sure you have enough uh, detail through the lighting on the top of the car. So we're shooting multiple options, basically. The white car is behind one car, another shot with the white car behind the other car, and then the final shot will be both cars there without any of the cards. It gives us the option to then, in post-production, remove the cards and comp together a final shot. It's a wrap. Yeah. At the end of the day, when there's this many people on set, right, everyone's always looking, what do we do next? Where do we go next? There's always a problem. And I think that's where we always come in and just manage to mediate, facilitate, keep the whole machine move forward. I think overall it's a light-hearted approach. 
It's a lot of stress. There's a lot of money involved. There's a lot of planning. So keeping it fun and having everybody upbeat makes a huge difference on set. Because it has that steel. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> it has that steel. Thank you guys. Come back and visit us. Watch the alleyway.